Bye. Welcome to WPG TV. My name is Dela Likumafle, and I'm here with the author of Chancing Faith in Tibaye. One amazing thing that struck me was the accomplishment of Naki. The fact that she's 25 and she has been able to achieve all that. A car and a rented apartment. I don't think it's far-fetched for Ghana today that you should find a 24-year-old female who has accomplished um, some of those things. I, I didn't really see it as she's accomplished so much, but um, I think we in Ghana today we have a lot of opportunities that when they um, some 15, 20 years ago. Yes, 15, 20 years ago, a 24-year-old girl would be expected to be living at home, uh, you know, taking trotters and taxis. Mm -hmm. But today, it's a little different. Even parents have more money. I guess the assumption would be that probably her parents provided her with a car that she's using and even probably rented a small apartment for her. When Thane met Naki the first day and all that happened. Their relationship starts off on a wrong note, if I may call it. Naki had a, a false impression of, of, of thing. You know, we have this image of Americans coming in, you know, they want to change everything. They want to use their culture. They think everything of theirs is better. So this is the perception that Naki has. Interestingly, the setting is Ghana, is Accra and all that, but the lady doesn't look Ghanaian to me. The cover was designed, well, to look beautiful. Um, I needed a black girl and a white guy um, to represent the story. It kind of de depicts a particular scene in the book, actually. It's romance, so that's really why I chose this, this cover. With this romance novel, do you think it's going to do well in Ghana? Ooh, do I think? I don't know. Do I hope? Yes, I hope it does well. Please buy my book. <laughs> you made a certain Ghanaian instead of um, going where we all know the romantic novels have been coming from. So what inspired the novel? A friend of mine um, first told me that, why don't you write romance novels? She was a romance reader and she knew I, I wrote stories. I used to always read to her what, I, what I'd written and things like that. So just one day she was like, ah, why, why don't you write romance? Um, I'd read One Mills and Boone. I was not very pleased with it. And then I read A Silhouette, which I liked. And so I had shelved that idea. And then suddenly one day I said, why not try it? I had read a writing prompt to write about a first kiss. So I wrote this scene and I liked it. The scene never made it into the book, but that's where the, the story started. Why did you make it Ghanaian? When you read all those books, sometimes it's nice, you know, to read a, a book that is set in the UK or the US, but it's also nice to read some of those things set in Ghana because love happens in Ghana. We get married in Ghana. We fall in love in Ghana. So why not? Why not have a romance novel that is set in Ghana? So many other things happen in the book. So as someone might be wondering, is this really Ghanaian? I think if we're honest with ourselves, that happens. You meet someone, you like the person, you're not so sure about the person, but yeah, when the person walks into a room, you it's like, it kind of upsets your system just a little bit. You find yourself not being able to talk properly, you know. So, so that does happen. Of course, when it's fiction, you, you have to dwell on it. You have to kind of highlight it a little more. But I think if we would really ask ourselves, it does happen. Then there were some terms that I found in the book quite mm -hmm. interesting, like um, things smelling of pure meal. <laughs> how how is the smell of a pure meal? That when when you have that that scent that makes you feel very female, then that's pure meal. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> Nakitu was blushing, and then she's supposed to be black like myself, and I've never seen a black blushing. Ah. And she was even wondering it herself. She was being told that she was blushing, and she didn't even believe it. Yes. Naki doesn't believe that she blushes, just like we don't. Um, and so that, that particular scene is actually from real life. <laughs> so you, you know you blush at times. Well, I'm told I blush. I don't believe it. And I know my face gets hot when I'm embarrassed. And then the space Naki gave her boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, Jamfi. Do you mm -hmm. think that's something that should be encouraged? He actually walked into her house, came to see another guy. Uh, see, the thing is, a lot of us, when we've been in a relationship with somebody, it's very difficult to pull away completely. And one of the things that you gather from that scene is that 
their families are friends. You know, he comes in and he tells her that um, your mom says that you haven't called her in a while. You see, so the, the, there's some friendship that that is there. So she she can't really cut him off completely, which is why he still feels very comfortable barging into her apartment. He knows she's not dating anyone anyway. Let's go to women, our career, relationships, and family. Naki wanted to prove herself to people, especially to her former boyfriend Janfi, who was thinking that. Um, she was just meant to be in the kitchen and all that. She was a family material. And mm. how can we combine all these, our career, relationships, family? Okay. I think I have a, a bit on, of an unpopular view on this. Couples need to share things, to share their lives. If we, you're, you're getting married or you're entering a relationship, you need to enter it with the, with the mind of sharing which means that when a woman gets married, she doesn't have to take on the second job of the home, you see. Um, if they are sharing the job of the home, which they are supposed to be building together anyway, then it makes it easier. You're, you're going to be less stressed out and you're going to be able to um, pursue your career or whatever other dreams. Because, I mean, basically, if, if I think if you're in a marriage or in a relationship where it's taking up so much of your time that you can't achieve the things that you want to achieve personally, then probably it's not working for you. Um, so the one of the ways I think that we can deal with it is to choose partners who are supportive of our dreams, who, who share our goals, and who are going to share with us the added responsibility of, of the home that we, we are both creating. Um, and perhaps if we do this, we would be able to go somewhere. Even Naki herself was doubting whether she could combine her relationship with Teen and then her career and all that she wanted to achieve. Mm -hmm. How best do you think she could have gone about it? Okay, you know, initially her, her solution was that she's cutting off romance. Um, she's just focusing on work. And fine, initially that was working. But um, you really can't cut off one and and you know, take on just one. Um, and I think, I, I hope one of the things I achieved was to let her grow into seeing that she can have love, she can have the romance and still have her career. And luckily she met a guy who bought into her dream, who wanted to be part of this dream, big dream that she had. Okay, so what were some of the experiences you had when you were writing the book, having to um, describe some of these things which are not so common in our culture. What were your experiences? Okay, Delali, I do not agree that I mean to me. in, in our culture. <laughs> I do not agree. Because a, a lot of times um, when I'm writing something, I, I pick from different places. My own experiences, friends, things like that. So a lot of the things that happen here, fine. You know, my imagination takes um, the story, you know, a, a, a few extra steps, you know, but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's, it's not really that it's, it doesn't happen here. Um, but in, in writing it, I kind of let the, the characters take the story where they want to take it, you see. So this, for this particular story, I think it works for the two of them. It may not have worked if I had chosen Naki to be, I don't know, somebody else. Some. Okay. It's just the two people kind of dictated where the story was going to go. So how long did it take to come out with a book? It took a very long time, a very, very long time. I, st I started in around 2004, thereabouts. And there, there were breaks. There was a period of a couple of years where I wasn't, I didn't touch the, the book. So in total, it would maybe some four years. Um, so when after the break, when I came back to it in a, I think 2008 thereabouts, it took another few months because it was more chapter by chapter. I hadn't really planned. I, I had a general idea what the book was going to be about and how it was going to end and things like that, but I didn't really know the details. So I used to write chapter by chapter, and when the chapter ended, I had to think about what's going to happen in the next chapter. The choice of an American publisher, I think that's. This actually came by chance. It. Um, I found a, a competition that uh, allowed us to pitch to an, an editor. And after a, a few weeks, I think, they said they wanted to publish it. 
Um, so that's that really is where or why I chose an American publisher in this in this instance. But I don't really have any like a preference between a Ghanaian publisher and um, a foreign one. So is the book out already? The book is out. It's actually been out since um, 31st March. It only arrived in Ghana recently. Okay. And um, it's out in ebook as well as print. And um, this week I expect that it would be in stock at Vidya books, Bookshop in Osu. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's likely to be in Citrus and um, Silverbird as well. Um, that is, I don't know the date yet, but definitely at Vidya you'd, you'd be able to get um, some copies. And um, anyone who's also interested can find me on Facebook and buy it from me directly. So what's next? What should we expect from MP? Ah, good one. Um, as you will notice, the book, the title, under the title you have From Ghana With Love, that is the title of the series. It's actually a series of three books, and I'm working on the book that comes after, okay. after this. And for you, for those who have read it, um, you would find the hero and heroine of book two in this book. That's all I'm going to say. So this has been an interview with MP Bayer. She's the author of Chance in Faith. So watch out for her next books.